Awesome. So Josh, uh, welcome to the first episode of uh, How I Designed This Brand. That's what I'm going to call this. Series. Hello. Yeah. Uh, nice. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. How you created uh, the Monochromatic Institute and why the long name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why the long name? I knew it was. Yeah, I knew it was too long. Yeah, um, yeah my name's Josh. Um, uh, I've been designing for pretty much ten years now. Yeah. Uh, went to university in Leeds uh, to graphic design. Started the Monochromatic Institute in when the pandemic hit, really. Okay. Uh, just on Instagram. It yeah. wasn't too long because I wanted. To, yeah, not too long ago, honestly. Yeah, it's um, it's gained quite a lot of traction in the last two years, to be honest. Yeah. So, well, less than two years. Um, I it was just a an experiment, really, in in design that I wanted to put out there. So it was like futuristic corporate design, things yeah. like that. Uh, and then I kind of quickly realized that, you know, people were liking it and I was getting contacted by people going, oh, yeah, can you do us a logo? Mm -hmm. and it kind of transitioned from something that was very conceptual and not very tangible, just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, stuff that was going around my head to, to things that I could actually put down and, you know, uh, make some money out of it, essentially. Yeah. And uh, yeah, design stuff that I was actually really happy to design. Yeah, cool. finding a little niche. Mm -hmm. So what, what were you doing before that, before you of the Instagram account at Monochromatic Institute? Um, so I was, I had another studio under the alias of Bang Tidy, <laughs> which Bang is Tidy. Uh, Bang Tidy, yeah. Oh, that was uh, another email that popped up. That's, I think I sent it that's, to you. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so I, I've switched emails <laughs> now. But um, that was a mishmash of, of what I thought people wanted and just what I thought, you know, I should be doing in terms of graphic design. So it's a mixture of illustrative, components, editorial, infographics, minimal design, branding, packaging, loads of stuff. And I, I quickly realized that it was, I was doing it alongside this new page, um, Monochromatic Institute. And I just, more and more people wanted stuff that I was doing for TMI. So I just went, it was a gradual transition. Mm -hmm. So I basically just stopped, stopped cool. doing the other kind of freelance stuff and then just focused on this brand and wanted to develop that. So, yeah. Cool. And, uh, and was like Instagram it. the main portal for you to get like clients? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was very surprised actually. I had uh, what turned, well, what started off as, you know, just a bit of a hobby and making a little bit of a side hustle kind of quickly yeah. became my main source of income. So, wow. And it was through, through Instagram. Like mainly through Instagram. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do. I do some stuff on Dribble, but I haven't got a single client through Dribble yet. I've got a few through Behance, but I'm, you know, I'm going to be trying to post more on Behance. But number one on Instagram. That's in, that's, yeah, number that's one is, yeah, by by long shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy because a lot of the designers that I've spoken to in the past, like the same, over 90% of their clients come through Instagram. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. I, I, you know, I didn't even, that wasn't even my goal, yeah. you know, to get clients, especially not through Instagram. I didn't yeah. even think of, you know, that was possible, but uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised. So it was nice. Do you, do, you, do you get the occasional message where they want like a free logo or a cheap logo? Um, yeah. I mean, I think Instagram is definitely going to attract those sort yeah. of people um, because it's not a professional design uh, platform specifically. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a social media platform. So yeah, you do, you do get the occasional message going, Oh, I've got this logo. Do you think you could edit it? And, you know, tweak it and I'll pay you like 50 bucks. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's good cool, man. That's cool. You've grown so much in like in just over a year. Like since yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah, cool. man. No, it's been, it's been a cool ride. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. So uh, people can check Josh's work at, uh, the underscore monochromatic underscore institute is that correct yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah i mean i go going back to that name i just wanted something that sounded a bit cool and ominous so okay. my brand is a you know yeah it was about kind of a very inspired by like soviet design and brutalist yeah, architecture. yeah, that's I got, yeah. Kind of like, yeah. yeah i wanted yeah European. i wanted to be a bit like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And like mysterious like yeah Oh, lots of like bold I'm, lines. I'm, yeah, very bold yeah. lines. Like, yeah, just yeah. I, I guess very hard hitting, minimal, dynamic, fluid stuff. Uh, I mostly oh, refer to yeah, the cool. studio now as just TMI because it's yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah. But <laughs> so, yeah. 
Uh, did you have any other names before that? Mm. No, I didn't. I don't, and it was very quick. It was, I didn't, I, as you know, as I said before, I, I didn't really expect it to turn into anything. So yeah. I wanted it to be a bit weird and futuristic and uh, dystopian in a way. So Ooh. awesome. Yeah. Sweet. So let's get started. So we're here to talk about one of your, uh, your brand new projects, and mm -hmm. it is called uh, Dines Media. Dines Media, out? yep. How did they contact you? Uh, yeah, they contacted me. Um, I think they rang me up. It's actually very, very rang you up. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, it's a very rare occurrence. I just got a, a phone call, and and he explained that you know he'd uh, been on my website. He'd seen like a project of mine at Behance, and uh, they are a family-run um, media company based in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, they needed a rebrand and I was like, okay, yeah, tell me a little bit more. And he was like, I really like your style, I really like your aesthetic. I want something that's very 80s, retro, yeah. old. And I was like, perfect, you know? And I, I really love getting those kind of, you know, um, introductions and because that's exactly what I like doing. So yeah. I was very excited about the project. But yeah, that's how he contacted me. And yeah, we had a brief discussion on the phone. Uh, and then he sent me over a brief, which is pretty, pretty clear. And yeah, that's what it's, we just jumped into it. Cool. And uh, did they have like a logo before? Oh, yeah, they did have a logo before. I, I, it was, I tried contacting them uh, today actually to see if they could send it to me, but you couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. But it was very, very simple. It was just a D and an M yeah. slightly overlapping in kind of like a Helvetica style font and then just okay. a Dines Media under it. Yeah. So did it look uh, okay? Oh, no. It looked okay. It looked okay. I mean, it's it was very it was super minimal. Uh, there wasn't anything much to it. It mm -hmm. was just a DNN. It wasn't very memorable. Yeah. Uh, memorable. Uh, the the blue color that they were using, which they wanted to keep in, initially, yeah. was a little bit dull. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that we worked on as well. Cool. Yeah. In the end, just to make it a bit more vibrant. Awesome. Cool. So you you've got a presentation for us, like to walk through the branding process and how it started. Yeah, so these are, can you see my screen? Yeah. Got that going? Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are, this is them in action. As you can see, the media company. Yeah. Get this thing off. Um, so they wanted something that was bold, dynamic, energetic, retro 80s style, mm -hmm. uh, layered and symbolic. So they are a family well, multi-generational group based in, in Georgia. They're specializing in creating branded and commercial video content. Uh, their work's really fast paced, bold and exciting. And so we needed to create a visual system that kind of reflected that. Uh, another aspect that they wanted to get across was the fact that there had been generations that had came before them. Mm -hmm. So they kind of wanted that layered symbolic approach just to, to reflect uh, the generations that had come before. Um, I think initially, and this is something that we carried through, the conversation was that the mark really had to be the centerpiece. That was yeah. like the showstopper uh, and that, that we could we could work on the type afterwards. But the, the type was never going to be uh, something that was going to draw the eye or be a main mm -hmm. focus of the design. It was, it was always going to be about that, that, uh, that, that mark. Um, that, yeah, you know, and that was going to tell the narrative, I guess, yeah. of, the, of the brand. Uh, so yeah, they wanted something that was reminiscent of the 70s, 80s, very bold. Yeah, because yeah, the, the mark kind of has a 70s look with like the lines converging into the detail. Right, yeah. Cool. And um, that's something very, very synonymous with the 80s, you know, especially yeah. like if you, you can think back to logos like IBM and things like that. Yeah. Um, it's almost very harsh, but that's what it, you know, very striking that's, and that's what they wanted. Um, so they already had a color palette in mind, uh, which was to use the blue uh, that they had. It was kind of a baby blue. It wasn't, it wasn't anything that was going to immediately draw you in. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of, yeah, we made, um, we did little tweaks to that and made it more, more of like an electric blue. Cool. Uh, so yeah, initially. Oh, wow. So these were the concepts. How, how so many, these were very, how many did you create very in rough concepts Oh. I think if we're talking about rough concepts, probably about 20, okay. probably more than that. Yeah. 
but these are very I'd so for me I'm not very good at I can sketch to a point but I think I've got so used to illustrator and how it works and how my way of working works yeah. it's it's much easier for me to just jump straight jump on at the time yeah. yeah so I create these shapes and kind of get a feel for yeah. you know where these lines are going to take me and what I can do representing the d and the layers and the fluidity of, of stuff like that so these were very rough ideas um as you can see i didn't really work too much on the type mm -hmm. yeah it was it was just like let's really draw the attention to the mark um I, so I, from I like these the one, i really liked i like the one uh, the row from the bottom up like it looks like a flower inside the d inside the uh, this one yeah 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 i really like that one yeah, yeah. um so again that that kind of idea was trying to get across what they did in, in terms of a media company as well yeah. i thought that initially that might have been important so i was kind of trying to play around with the kind of aperture mm -hmm. lens kind of focal point kind of thing um something to do with growth and development as yeah. well is, is um, like is that what he described in the, in the brief like what was he looking for they, in the mark like it, um so the mark was um I think pretty much was to be it was layered dynamic energetic yeah. bold and clean so yeah. i'm not i'm not particularly one who will just do what the client asked me to do i'll, yeah. I'll if i have an idea and i can quickly put it you know on paper i'll um i'll do it uh it, just to see if it can you know it's something they haven't initially thought of and yeah. they'd be like oh no actually that's really cool yeah we want to go with that um so from there these are the kind of these are the five initial ones that I sent across. Okay. Um, so the one on the on the left, obviously we've we've got the D, and then we've got the fluidity and okay. the kind of uh, yeah, I wanted to get this kind of you know fluidity across, uh, hence the drip. Uh, the next one's very very simple. Those are the lines and the layers. Um, one across from that, pretty much the same, but tried to put media in there as well. So that was another. Um, it wasn't necessarily just focused on dines itself and just the D. Yep. Um, it was uh, the client kind of wanted to see what it would look like with dines media as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the fourth one is something that we ended up kind of exploring that in, in further uh, in in terms of the the dynamic kind of lines that are you know disappearing into like that focal point. Um, I think one of the the feedback issues with that one is that it looked like a shell it kind of looked like yeah, a shell yeah, like yeah, yeah. Up. Mm -hmm. yeah and it doesn't really the, the d is there but it's not immediately it's not like completely yeah yeah it wasn't completely yeah it wasn't completely it wasn't it didn't have the form on the the, the top left and the the bottom left and the last one is 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 another uh another concept that was very close to being chosen actually initially uh because i think his business partner really liked it um and I like, I really like that one. I think it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of legs. It's, I think it's super unique. It's got the layers in there. It's, um, I think it's, it's pretty memorable and it's got a kind of weird, I don't know, perspective to it. I was quite happy with that uh, one. With the, with um, the angle, yeah. yeah. So they're almost um, like in that one. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. Very, very close. Um, so after that kind of conversation, we decided to explore a few more developments That's so cool. this is another one that i did yeah so you can you can see there that the the the, the d letter form is yeah is is really clearer yeah. yeah and we've still got the layers in there we've kind of got that dynamicness and uh i kind of feel like, that like looks, sound waves kind of yeah, like, yeah the yeah, waves yeah. like you know the so you know you could definitely closely link that to yeah sound or video production um another one this is kind of uh, along the same lines as the uh, the wave kind of format. Again, the D is a little bit less obvious there, uh, which was an issue. Uh, and the same with this one as yeah, well. Um, I quite like this one. Uh, I think a complaint with this was that the the uh, the waves were a little bit too rounded, elliptical. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I actually really like this one when it's uh, flipped uh, forty five degrees, so the the dot is on top. Okay. Like kind of, of, yeah. yeah. It's like a sunset kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. water ripple mark. Oh, yeah, uh, so yeah, on from there, we kind of hit where we were gonna we were gonna take the final logo. So this was me exploring 
those dynamic focal point lines uh, whilst maintaining the uh, clear outside of the D. Yeah. Um, you can see on the left that it doesn't have the, the bar yet on the outside. Yeah. Um, I did, that's something that I added later, I think, because I wanted it to, I wanted the lines to look like they were disappearing into something rather than okay. just ending. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one on the, the, one on the right uh, wasn't necessarily a hit because he thought it looked too much like a flower, which I can oh, see yeah, there. Yeah, yeah this, the yeah. kind of, you know, those lines kind of form a stem. How, um, how long did it take you to come to this point doing the project? Uh, honestly, not long, really. I was pretty much first go uh, when I took those lines. Um, it's basically I used like a, a grid. I just mm -hmm. used the pen tool to draw the lines. Um, and then I used the pathfinder of a D that I made and just clipped it out. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was pretty much instant. Uh, so let me see. These are kind yeah. of um, early business card concepts. I wanted to show the client what it would look like in context. Um, so you can see here that we've just got dines. Um, I quite, kind of like having the dines word mark the same width and the, they're the same height, sorry, as uh, the focal point of the lines. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that looked really cool and very energetic and, and modern. Um, the uh, back of the business card I wasn't too happy with. It kind of looks like, cool though, like, but look, then again, it doesn't look like a flower. It kind of yeah, it looks it looks like a flower. It's a little bit jarring. I didn't like it the way it connected. Um, but then, so the next development I did was the final, pretty much. Um, this you can see that I added the bar there. Yeah. Uh, uh, we were actually torn, to be honest. We were the client was like, it's either it's either this one or, or it's or the new one. Yeah. I preferred the new one because, as I said before, the lines look like they're disappearing into something. Mm. and it's almost like it's going into another dimension or another, yeah. you know, uh, and, and I really like that. I think it adds a little bit more depth. Uh, it still remains, a, it's obviously a flat logo, but it kind of almost gives it a 3D uh, aesthetic. Um, as soon as I used uh, Eurosteel Extended Black, it was a winner. Did, did, um, you, did you edit it in any way? Like any, or did no, you just bring it closer to that? Yeah, okay. it, well, it, there, there were there were a few edits. So initially, the dines and the media were both on the same line, but it was too okay. long. Minus yeah. Uh, and obviously, we've experimented with putting the logo. You can see on my shirt, logo yeah. on top. Um, so that's just a very vari uh, variation of the mark um, or the logo type. Um, but yeah, I think as soon as he saw Eurosteel coupled with that mark, it was yeah, that, that's the aesthetic. There we go. Um, Obviously, Eurosteel is heavily, heavily used. Uh, still, even now. Yeah. But I think I if you look at it most, I used to use it a oh, lot. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I I had a real, almost an addiction to this typeface. I used yeah. it on everything, and especially in the early days of my page, yeah. that it was almost. I use it on my. It's on my own branding. TMI, yeah, yeah. like that's using my own branding, and uh, I thought that it would be perfect uh, for the mark. It's very. It's a typeface that you find on a like old computer uh, recording equipment and things like that. Um, so it made sense to me, you know, you, you're going to see on camera equipment that they're going to use and sound equipment that they're going to use. Um, so a couple of very nice thing. Um, we used an off white for the Dines media yeah. and just, uh, yeah, electric blue. Uh, they, they mostly use the, the logo um, on a black background. Mm -hmm. um, I think on their website, it's, it's the same, but yeah. So this oh, is the cool. grid construction. I like looking at the grids. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, the grids are, I mean, I know some people feel a bit, I know how, you know, some people feel a bit weird, uh, weird about grids and they're not, yeah. they don't think do they're you, Do you pay a lot of necessary. attention to, to gridding, like measuring exact proportions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. everything has to be, yeah, I can't, <laughs> I may, maybe that's, that's something to say about me and uh, OCD and, but I think most graphic designers have that yeah. OCD uh, component to them, especially yeah, if you've I, been I doing it a long time. Like if I'm creating a font, uh, yeah, it, it has to align. It has to align to the to the gridding. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, like snap, when snap I'm making, especially. Yeah. 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 Snap yeah. to grid. So when when um 
when I'm making something like this, I'll always have a, a grid that I've actually, I don't, I don't actually use the grid component in Illustrator. I'll draw my own grid and then put it on a separate layer because yeah. I find it's a little bit easier to manage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see that I use a 20 pixel by 20 pixel uh, spacing in a 500 pixel grid. Um, so yeah, it's multiples of 20. Um, and I, yeah, you can, you can be really accurate and stuff with that, especially with the pen tool. Uh, if you've made these kind of four pixel dividings, you can use the pen tool to just, yeah, start at the top and just drag down. And what I find well, if, when you was drag- it, Was it annoying that you got 37 bit as an odd number? Yeah, 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 that's, that's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, yeah, that might, might have screwed my head up a little bit, but then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> needs to be 38 <laughs> yeah um but yeah that so that's kind of like yeah that's where my head goes when i when i see things like this this is and and equally the negative space is just as important as the positive space yeah especially in my work like it's it's not and i think that's very clear when you look at grids a lot of the time because of, more often than not it's actually the negative space that jumps out at you more yeah um so yeah, that's the grid construction. I kind of want to put that on something to be honest, because it's it's one of the cooler grids that I've done. Uh, yes, yeah, so color palette. So we just use black, Gainsborough gray, and electric blue. Um, I think I, I did cool. Gainsborough gray. Apparently, that's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's very very subtly off white, um, yeah. but I, I I don't really use white a lot in in my work. It's I. I kind of tend to stick to that gray. Yeah, I've noticed that in, um, uh, on Instagram feed. Yeah, but yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah. I, 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 there's something about black and white, pure white, that I find a little bit jarring to the mm -hmm. eye. Yeah, like the contrast can kind of look a bit. I don't know. It, it's, it's nice to kind of flatten things a little bit, and it gives it. It's easier to absorb the information. I think. Um, I got next. So these the the typefaces that I used already talked about Eurosteel. Um, use on everything. Designed in 1962, just a very versatile typeface. Oh, is that old? Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's it's, and it was actually developed from an existing typeface called I can't even remember what it's called now. Mono something maybe. Oh no, Micrograma. That's what it's okay. called. Which which is originally just an uppercase typeface, and they the same designer actually with another, uh, maybe a couple of designers took it and created um, uh, a lowercase version and things like that. Um, so another typeface that I used was Acumen Acum Variable Concept. Yeah, which is, uh, I, I feel like yeah. I've been using that for much longer. <laughs> Say again? I feel like I've been using Acumen for much longer. Even though it's oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think this is a... A variable version so maybe the variant okay, is yeah, yeah. newer it's probably what it is um but yeah so that's, that's what we used for business cards and things like that uh, so here is his uh here's the logo on a gray background um the blue was quite easy to to work with because it it's very vibrant on both uh positive and negative backgrounds um it's it's an RGB blue, so it's not it's not printing friendly. Okay. I made that very clear at the start. I was like, you're not going to be able to achieve this blue if you're going to get business cards. Mm -hmm. And that was something that they they didn't mind. They actually they said, oh, we're going to actually just stick to black and white on the okay. business cards and things like that. And if they ever got things printed, which they do, this T-shirt, then they'd use um, spot colors to try and get it oh, yeah. as 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 bright as possible. Um, so yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. It's, it's quite bright right on your cap, the blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The blue is really good on the cap. Yeah. yeah. This is, I mean, I think something about embroidering, like the, the the stitching is, I think it's easier to achieve those vibrant colors. So, yeah, it worked actually really well on the cap. Um, yeah, so the business card concept, the back of the card is meant to, uh, signify those lines that are disappearing into the D coming back okay. and it, they, they've well, been kind of switched they're around. They're in the positive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like that idea um, of having something coming back and it, and it, you know, it ties in with the brand and it, it, it's, it gives that very energetic dynamic shift. 
yeah. uh, and it's very simple as well um which is cool uh and again that was that was very very that didn't take long to achieve either um i think a lot of the branding elements that i tend to uh use or develop come directly from the logo um so it's not that much uh not that much extra work i guess to to achieve something like that yeah good so yeah these are the business cards mocked up um they did, ended up did, using... did you handle printing or did you just hand, hand them the file no i i advised on printing i said uh, if you want good consistent print you'd probably use moo uh the yeah. lux cards yeah, that's what so mean. what they actually ended up yeah what they actually ended up doing you know with moo that you can get that that card in the middle and it's a different color on the outside as in a, a thicker so there's basically three cards okay so the 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 front is glued to a middle card which yeah. is then glued to the back yeah. and you can choose the color of the inside card and they oh, ended cool. up choosing blue Okay. So you have this electric blue strip that goes around, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, um, yes, I've been there. That's a, that's yeah. Really I could, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're Lux cards. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're really cool. They're really nice. They're really fun. I actually use them for my old studio. They're really, really durable. Uh, yeah, feel, feel very good. Uh, so that's what they went with. So they ended up looking almost identical to this. Um, yeah, some more branding elements. Uh, they're actually going to use this on their studio. It's going to go wrap around the building. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a bit of a mural. Mural. Kind of mural, that's the one. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, looking forward to seeing that when it's done. I've you know, tempted to go go down and well, go up and help them if they need any help with it. But uh, what else we got? The T-shirts. Uh, this was super exciting. Uh, I've actually got, well, in, in the beginnings of uh creating a little t-shirt t-shirt um apparel company with my friend back in england yeah uh so this was really cool to work on um the running and gunning uh is something that they came up with that's kind of like their slogan is, uh, is, is that on the back of your t-shirt yeah it's on the back yeah oh. so um, see what the back is. oh nice yeah yeah um so yeah that's something that they came up with um you can see kind of like the symbols at the bottom Oh, yeah. uh, these, okay. these are all taking up 4k just very symbols that are very prevalent in the recording kind of uh media industry it's something that you know when you look through a viewfinder you'll see all these weird little symbols yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's an aesthetic that we wanted to go with so you, you and, created those uh, for them as well the icons yeah yeah so the uh i'll show you there you go it's clearer Oh, so yeah. the the, bot, the bottom left hand D is actually a concept that we didn't end up using. Oh, the one you showed me earlier, yeah. Yeah, uh, and there we've just got these like almost like barcode kind of thing, uh, just kind of like geeky techie symbols that kind of bring things to life. Yeah. Um, which yeah, I was super happy with the way it turned out. Uh, it's got uh, crew on the sleeves, so this is what they use like their crew T-shirts. So it's when they're on set, this is what they wear. Um, so yeah, super happy with how it turned out. Yeah, I get lots of compliments from from wearing it out. They were nice enough to send me a hat and a t-shirt, which is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what we got. Oh, awesome. There we go. How, how long did the whole project take, like, from start to finish? I think about two weeks. Oh, that's not, yeah. that's not long enough. Wow. No, it was, it was pretty quick. We, we worked very, I'm very, I'm very much the person who, when I have an idea, I'll send it to someone. Yeah. I don't wait and present. Yeah. I'll wait, I'll, I'll present initial concepts yeah. and then we'll take it from there. But the, the, the conversation had, that's had after sending initial concepts mm -hmm. um, is very quick. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like doing it on WhatsApp and just, just, okay, just, yeah. just chucking it out there, yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. So you, you, don't, you don't like, like say once you get the, you got the brief, you don't like, mm -hmm get the concepts, put out like a whole PDF presentation and then send that. I know, I don't, I don't, I, so I don't like sending, I don't like overwhelming clients with a lot of concepts. Yeah. I think the max I'll send out is probably five. Yeah. Um, take, I think it took me about, actually, no, it's probably longer than two weeks. It's probably about three weeks because mm -hmm. the initial designs took about 10 days. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, so yeah, probably three weeks. But once I've got those initial designs, I'll present five concepts that I'm happy with. And I know mm -hmm. that I've got variants yeah. of if they want to see. Mm -hmm. 
and you just yeah. send it through WhatsApp. No, no, no. I took the the initial the initial concepts are sent as presentations. Oh, okay. So cool. you'll have okay. yeah, you're so I, I just need to make sure that they can see designs yeah. that are in, you know, on business cards and in context and things yeah. like that, not just yeah. like here's it, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> but after that, yeah, I'm after that, we just I just take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After that, I just take it to WhatsApp and it's just yeah, until, we're, cool until we're happy with it. Yeah, because you get you get, yeah, you, get I just, a, you get a proper foundation start and then then it's just quick reviews uh -huh. after that. Cool. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm so that, that was <laughs> It's good. I mean, I, if you know, I not everyone's the same. Yeah. Not all clients are going to react to things or you know the same way. I found that this method is is good and it it saves time and it's. Mm -hmm. I think once you've because I think from ten days mm -hmm. after you've agreed work, I think that's quite a long time for someone to wait for something. Yeah. Uh, especially if they're like excited to get it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to make them oh, okay. It's going to be another ten days and you'll see more revisions because they're like ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so i just quick fire from there so it's a very close conversation it's what what do you like about this be blunt what don't you like about this do you like mm -hmm. this do you like that it's all very, it's just drip feeding constantly mm -hmm. yeah cool cool um what were their comments when they saw the final uh, the final mark oh yeah yeah they yeah probably probably some of the best feedback i've ever had in logo design which is awesome to hear. And I, they were super nice guys, creative themselves. So yeah. it was easier to kind of talk through creative processes and where your, your mind was at, because yeah. obviously they're, they're kind of in the same mindset with what they do. So yeah, really cool. Uh, I'm really happy with it. It's probably one of my favorite logos I've designed and probably, probably yeah, definitely one of my favorite basic brand identities that I've done. Uh, it's, it's very them and it's very me. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Sweet. Um, what did you take away from the whole project? Was there anything you took away that you learned? Um, I learned. I think this is one of the first projects where I decided to explore that drip feeding process. Yeah. Uh, so I think if it, anything that I learned from this, it's it was to make sure after your initial presentation, you're you talk and communicate with the client and and give them a ring and you know don't be afraid to to tell people that if they if you want if you want to call me and actually talk about it then we can do that um yeah so that's probably that's probably something i learned yeah communication for so sure he's going through your yeah, behance uh presentation you spend a lot of time like creating presentations for behance but i've heard quite a few uh, creatives and agencies that spend a long time do proper like Behance presentations. Oh, what you do? Yeah, talk about like Behance. Yeah. yeah. Like, did you, did you spend a lot of time to, to create that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think that you know, going back to the conversation we had earlier, um, I, I definitely want to put more work on Behance. Yeah. Um, I think if you are putting work on Behance, it does, you need to sit down and you really need to think about how you yeah, present it because it, because yeah. it is, because it is a professional platform. Yeah. It's not like Instagram where you can just throw up an image and, uh, hope for the best. Essentially you need to, sh you need to be showing the best of what you're capable of on yeah. Behance. I think that's what it's all about, especially if you want to be featured, yeah, uh, yeah. which I've been, I think I've, I've got, three projects on there have been featured once, oh, wow, which I was cool. looking to do. Um, so yeah, I think it's just that that goal of, I wanna get featured on Bee Hunt. So you need to make sure that you're presenting your best work in context and yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, what's, what's your advice to, to logo designers watching this? Um, I don't be afraid to show ideas, uh, that you think are a good fit, but you 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 may not necessarily think the client like is going to like them. I think if you I think rely on your professional expertise in that uh, in that the if you if you're feeling that they might like something, but you yeah. you, you know you think that they might be a bit if you just just send it over. Don't be afraid to get your ideas out there. Um, don't necessarily stick to the plan. I think it's another good idea. Um, I know that when you're agreeing fees and stuff, um, you know, you'll say to a client, oh, I'll present you with three to five concepts for this much, blah, blah, blah. But if you've got the ideas, show them, 
you know don't withhold ideas that you've got just because you said that this is only worth three concepts you know yeah, yeah. cool awesome uh what's what's in store for the future for the monochromatic institute oh i don't know maybe changing the name <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so um, is, is this a, a full-time gig now like are you a full-time freelance yeah this, this is okay. this is full-time now yeah which is which is good I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where i can create uh create um logos and uh branding purely on a, an aesthetic that i love so that's really cool uh, so in the future I, I would like to see get more people involved you know as an institute suggests that it's a it's a place of learning it's a place of people coming together yeah. uh, collaborating maybe getting you know other people on board to come work come work for me cool. but we'll see yeah it's 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 early days yet but yeah, yeah. very early like you you've grown so much in a year and uh, yeah i've seen i've seen yeah. you like going to the next level yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's exciting, uh, especially being in the US. Um, there's lots of opportunities uh, to talk to other like-minded people. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, excited. Okay. Is, is is there like a different creative community compared to the one in the UK? Do you see any difference? There? Uh, I well, I was in so when I when I moved over to the US yeah. uh, in England, I was uh, I was living in Brighton. So Brighton has a very, very, very tight knit design community. And obviously it's uh, proximity to London really helps uh, in terms of, you know, being able to talk to other designers and things like that. Where I am, uh, it's not the best, but it's, it's, it's not necessarily an avenue that I've actually gone out and explored yet. Oh. Um, so I live in a little town called St. Augustine, which is an hour south of Jacksonville. And Jacksonville is a huge, huge city, so I'm sure there's very talented designers from Jacksonville, but it, it's it's nothing that I've gone out and ventured and explored yet. But that's what I'm planning on doing. Yeah. Awesome. We just got somebody coming, but I guess that'll be too late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I've recorded. It's recorded. Yeah. Uh, nice. So thanks, Josh. Thanks for all your time. Uh, yeah, no worries, watching, man. Uh, Go check out Josh at the underscore monochromatic underscore institute. And your website is the monochromatic dot institute. Is, is That's that the one. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah, looking forward to more of your work. I'm, I'm, I'm really a fan of bold lines. So I resonate with your work. And uh, I'd like to get you maybe in the future on a live logo challenge. I don't know if you've seen some of the episodes. Yeah, no, I have. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, That'd be cool absolutely. to get you yeah. one of those. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. Awesome. Have Sweet a great well, thanks for having me. Friday. And yeah. keep in touch. Yeah, we'll do, man. See you soon. Thanks for joining. Bye. Yeah.